So how do we actually write AJAX? We're going to talk about we're going to talk about how we go about writing AJAX, and there are three points to it. There's a, a wider variety of things you can really add to an AJAX request, but this again is just an introduction to get you some heads up information. So I think the, the three main things that you really need to know if you just want to write AJAX right now really easily is that you need to create an XHR object, and then you need to send a request that you package up from the client to the server, and then when the server responds, you need to handle that response from the server with a callback function. And that server response, or that you handle that when the server is actually responded to you. So first let's look at creating the XHR object. Um, don't worry too much about these try and catch blocks that I put in here. That's just uh, trying each individual uh, XHR item out. But what we need to notice from here is that um, what you'll see, this is actual JavaScript, and it's just a function that I've written called create request. And inside of it, we have three different requests that I've made here. You'll actually only make one request, but this is checking for different browsers. All right, the first one, new XML HTTP request, that's just going to do a wide range of browsers like Internet, I mean, like Firefox, um, Mozilla. That's going to catch most of the browsers. Um, the the next one, the Active X object, that line is for older Internet Explorer browsers. And then the last one, the new Active X object, Microsoft.xml HTTP, that is for newer Internet Explorer browsers. So this is cross-browser code for actually creating an AJAX request. Again, all these slides will be available for you, so I can. Um, you can grab those. Either I'll be sending them to you in email, and they'll also be posted at, our, at Develop Intelligence website in the learning section. The second part I said is sending the request. Now, inside this function, again, it's JavaScript. We have just I'm just calling the create request function, and I've created a URL variable called responder.php. Um, you can see what it is in responder.php at the bottom. right there. Uh, as I said before, respond in your PHP you can have something really simple as text. I just have in here, I'm back. That's it. It's nothing else in my PHP file. Uh, and then after we've set up a URL to where we want to send this request, we initiate or we instantiate, we, we open up our request I should say, sorry. Um, so we're going to do a get method here as a way of posting our information. You could also do, a, or as a way of sending our information, you could also do a post, but we're just doing a get. And then you're also going to be Inside of there, you're going to be passing the um, arguments of a URL. And then we're also passing into this, this open method true. And true right there is a, a value. It can either be true or false. True means that we're going to be sending this. We want to do an asynchronous request. False means that we want to do a synchronous request. So typically, you wouldn't write JavaScript to do your, your, asynchronous, requ your synchronous requests. Uh, on your forms, and the way it's been done in the past, you just have an action attribute that sends off information to a certain server location, a certain web address. But you can write JavaScript requests like I have here, not only for asynchronous, but also for synchronous interactions if you wanted to. And then we have this request.onReadyStateChange. That's a property of the request, re request object. Um, and that's going to tell us whenever there's a state that's changing in the request. Um, we're not going to get into the states too much, but all you need to know is that when that when that on ready state change equals four, that means that the the request is actually processed and ready for your browser to interact with. So what we're doing is every time this on ready state changes, this property changes, this callback function that we're going to write is uh, going to be called. Okay, and inside that callback function, we'll check to make sure that the ready state's on four. And the last thing we do is we actually send the request. And we're not sending any parameters to it. We're just sending null information. But we just do request.send. Then we look at our callback function. Did somebody have a question? No, nope, maybe just a little feedback in my headphone. OK. So let's look at the callback function then. Inside of there, we have simply put, as I said before, we're checking for the ready state to make sure that it's equal to 4. And then we're also going to do um, this request.status. And that 
request.status is just going to make sure that our request is fine, you know, that we're not – that we actually sent it to the correct website, uh, the web server. You know, we wouldn't get a 200 if we actually typed in instead of response.php, if I typed in back.php or something, there would, of course, be the, – the request status would not be 200. It would be probably a 404. I couldn't find it. Um, and then the underneath that, in that side, inside of that if statement, what we're going to do is, is interact with the information that's coming back from the response. So in JavaScript, you have a couple of main, um, main methods that are important, uh, and they're called on, on the document itself. So the way that you use those, one here is document.getElementsByTagName, and the other is document.getElementById. .getElementById get elements by tag name is going to bring back a whole array of elements in your actual HTML or in your DOM, your document object model. So if we have paragraphs in here, which you can see, um, I have three paragraphs, one, two, three. Oh. <laughs> there you go, three. Um, I have three paragraphs. So what I'm looking for, since it's going to be getting a whole array, uh, JavaScript does zero indexed array. So what that means is we don't want to look at this first paragraph. We're going to be looking at the second paragraph. And what I'm going to be doing in that second paragraph is I'm doing a dot enter HTML. And enter HTML means that we're going to be injecting um, HTML into the document object model. So the nice thing about the document object model in, H in this world of web programming is that it can be changed on the fly. That's where your dynamic interaction comes from. So we're going to actually be injecting our response that was, I believe it was I'm back, into this actual P tag. So right in here where I have Let's Try Ajax, when I click on this in the website, it's going to, because I've got this little on-click event handler, when I click, this Start It function is going to be called. It shouldn't be Start It. Yes, it should be. Sorry, Start It is back sort of creating my request on the last page. It's going to call a start it function. And we're going to have changed from let's try Ajax to it will be saying I'm back. Okay? And we get that from this request.response text. Um, response text is a property on our request object. And if we want just text or HTML to come back, uh, we would use this. If we wanted XML, we do a response.xml. So I'm going to actually share with you again Internet Explorer. Okay. And inside of here you can see my three paragraphs. It's it's a nice day. Let's try Ajax. I really like the weather. All right, now I said before if I pressed on let's try Ajax, if I click, I get a response back. All right? And you'll notice that only that little bit of the page was changed. Nothing else was, had come back to me. All right, so I can just do that again. Um, if I refresh the page, you'll notice up here that my page is ajax.html. And when I click here, nothing changes. I'm still on the ajax.html, but I actually have that information from the PHP that comes back here that says I'm back. 